Hi everyone, it's Cliff. So everybody's been asking a PIF UHD multi-level pixel alignment implicit function for high resolution 3D human digitization. So what does that mean? That means we take one photo, we turn it into a 3D model. We do it all with machine learning. And this was created by these nice people at USC, Facebook Reality Labs, and Facebook AI Research. So you just released this code up on GitHub around June 25th, and I'm one of the first people that's successfully done this. However, there's a process to this, so you will create the 3D object, the 3D model, in uh, this right here in the Google Collab notebook, if you'd like, and then you would bring this to Blender, the 3D model and the original image texture, and then we would UV map the original image texture to the 3D model that I created in machine learning. Then what we would do is we'd take that model and we'd bring it into Mixamo, which is made by Adobe, but they actually bought it back in 2014 and then they kind of shelved it and they didn't really do anything with it. And so you can get Mixamo for free and I really wish that Adobe would do something with Mixamo because everyone use it and it's an incredible product because you can use one of their models, one of their 3D models, they have many models, or you can use a model like this and you can import it and then they have the skeletons rigged so with, with all different animations. They have like 50 different animations, dancing, running, jumping, all that. And so you bring in a Mixamo then and then we bring the, we would rig the skeleton of the 3D object, the 3D file, and then we would bring that into, say, Unreal Engine or Unity, where you would turn that into a, a game pawn, basically, in uh, Unreal Engine, and then you could uh, rig that so you can move that all around in Unreal Engine. But that end-to-end -end process is a very long and complicated process, so I'm going to run you through this really quick. So we have this right here at this GitHub. And basically what we're doing is we're taking one photo and we're turning it into a 3D model. That's the first thing we're doing here. So I'm going to leave the code to the GitHub for you. But nowadays people use Jupyter Notebooks and so they do also Google Collab. So right here, Collab Research Google. So I'm going to give you the link to the PIF UHD demo, which when you click on it, it's going to open up in your Google Collab. Now you may not know this, but everyone has a Google Drive connected to their Gmail, which holds about 15 gigabytes of storage data for free. But you also get a Google Collab, collabresearch.google.com. You have your own, you have your own collaborative Jupyter Notebook platform here. So when you go into Google Collab, so you're going to click the link, and that's going to bring you to the project. And it's going to say PIF UHD. But then what you want to do is you want to go here to File. And then you could do Open in Playground Mode, or you would want to save a copy in Drive. So that's what I've done here, is I've taken their original project, because you don't want to run your images on their project. You copy that GitHub. Google Collab Notebook Project into your Google Drive and it's going to open up in your Google Collab here. And with Google Collab you actually get a GPU usage. So there's the CPU, the processor, and then there's the GPU, which is the graphics processor. So they actually give you a free compute time and free access to very powerful graphics processors. So that can speed up the work because in machine learning you need a lot of compute time. So you would click on the link and then you would go file, save a copy in the drive, and then that's where we're at now. So now you have the Google Collab version. And then right here they're just showing you a little of the demo and the presentation. Now this is a Jupyter Notebook and people use this to collaborate and also to use this for cloud computing, for programming. So what you need to do is you can skip all this and you can go right down to here. 
Now, one thing you really need to know first is over here. So, you may not see this. A lot of people would miss this. So, we've got a table of contents of how the Jupyter Notebook's laid out. But this is even more important right here. With all the files of the Google Collab Notebook here. This is key to have. You have to have this. And so, you may not have seen that. But that's where the output files are going to go. So, right there. You're going to see that in a second when we clone and download. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to first clone the PIF UHD repository off of GitHub. So, what you do is you click that, and now it's cloning the repository. Now it's done. Now we're going to configure the input data. So, what it's doing is CD, it's changing the drive to content PIF UHD sample images. And you see here, it's now created this and then the code with the sample image it's going to be in there and the output data is also going to be in there so right here a lot of people don't see that but that's where all the files are so we've just created that do i want to upload an image yeah we're going to use our own image so you would click that and what this is doing import files and the file name upload file keys it's actually giving you an interface here so you can choose a file from your desktop so right here we're going to choose a file and then right here well, we're going to pick this one which is a picture of Marilyn Monroe which I have on the desktop which is color so now what it's done is it's going say it's 7785 so it's uploading that image from the desktop into our Google Collab here into a file right there 100% done so now what we're going to do is right here import OS try the image path it's setting up all the folders and the different paths so now we're going to switch CD to the content folder so now the first thing we have to do for the machine learning is we're pre-processing which is the cropping of the image so what they want us to do right here is we're going to do a git clone and to do that git clone you do have to have they have all these different symbols and magic symbols so that you have to have that exclamation point when you want to do a git clone so basically you just hit that so now what we're doing is we're downloading the lightweight human pose estimation pie torch so that's a, a pre-trained model of human pose estimation and actually why we're doing that is because it's going to get the human pose of the photo but it's not using that as the human pose estimation it's just using that to basically get the object of the person so now we've done that so now we're going to switch over to this file and now we're going to do a w get and see this right here is open vino so this is open cv and this is the open vino training extension human pose estimation so what they are doing is they are going to intel and intel is open source the open vino so they're using intel open vino open cd intel open vino and they're using uh, a human pose estimation model basically in order to do this so we've run through that and that came down real fast so now what we're going to do is we're going to set up the pytorch 3d here so we uh, just run that right there and it's importing everything into the images okay so now we're gonna go down here and we're gonna run that checkpoints the, the iterations we're mapping to CPU okay so now we're gonna download the pre-trained model Okay, and we switch to uh, basically CD into this PIF UHD folder here. So now right here is where we get the download the trained model. And what is the dot sh means we're gonna, it's it's basically a script. This a program that's gonna run. So we're doing that. See the the uh, download 
see the download train model.sh it's a bash script it's a program and it's trying to make dire make directory the checkpoints see the end of the checkpoints and then it's doing a wget to bring all that down right now it's going to take two minutes okay that's all done so now we're going to do this right here the last two things you hit here run pif uhd so this is actually generating the 3d mesh right here and creating and outputting the obj 3d model file so see that was really quick look how fast that does that so now the last thing which takes a few minutes is to render the results here so this takes about five minutes so really this process to go from one photo to a full 3D model in machine learning takes less than 10 minutes. Now what I would definitely recommend is when you input a photo that you use a T-pose or an A-pose. A T-pose is where you have your arms held out on both sides because that's the easiest way to translate the 3D model and to a rig skeleton so we can animate it so uh, other poses or other poses are going to be more difficult so it's going to take about five minutes so all you do is click this button right here and then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to generate the video from the object with a turntable and it's going to play right here the outputted 3d model on a turntable and also show the original image okay so here are the last two steps this is going to take about five minutes then once we have the 3d object all done in, a, in about five six minutes then uh, i'm going to import that into blender and then i'm going to show you how to add the texture but really it's only going to add the texture to one side and then uh you'll have to spend more time cleaning up the model if you'd like on the feet and the hands and different spots because you just have to retouch up the model it's not going to be coming out perfect but you're going to get about 90 to 95 percent of the model so this is uh, going to save you so much time where you wouldn't have to completely model some person from scratch you have it uh, just all from a photo within 10 minutes or less an entire head and body pose so then what you would do is you would uh, output the entire 3d model with the textures embedded and then we're going to bring that into mixamo adobe mixamo and then i'm going to add the skeleton and then we can animate it but because this pose isn't a t pose it may not want to animate the uh, skeleton so that's maybe a little problem at the end that i just want to make you aware of so when you take a picture of yourself and then you do this or you get a picture you want them standing straight pose up full body and then their arms out to both sides that way you can rig the skeleton and then turn it into an animated uh, 3d model and a game object a game pawn animated or you could have them just standing straight with their hands to their sides but uh, have both arms out a little bit and that would be more of an A pose. But the T pose definitely works best. So I'm going to run this now. And then once we do that in about five minutes, we're going to hit this and get the entire result. And get the rendered 3D model. Even though it's already done here. We're going to get the entire 3D model rendered result. And a video of that all shot out. And this where it's taking all the time building the wheels so about five minutes here and then just that and we'll have the whole 3d model right there as a video okay so we've just finished we've created the model everything's done PyTorch 3d it's incredible all we have to do is right here is we pull out and we're to generate a video from the model and also show a picture in the video so all i have to do is hit that run that cell right here and here it comes
Wow. So it's amazing to see how it comes out so she can play it right there. And it, it actually does a great job because it, uh, see, it, it takes the human pose estimation. So people do poses like that. So it has clear arm, clear leg pose. So it can fill in with the machine learning through the inference of what it thinks is the back of the dress, the back of the leg right there. However, it does have a uh, problem with the feet here. You're gonna have to clean that up in the blender. And then right there, you have some artifacts. But I mean, we're taking a photo and we're turning into a full 3D model and it's virtually almost done. You can actually even sculpt it more in Blender, clean it up even more and make it a very nice 3D model. So now that we've completed that, what I do is I go into here and we go into PIF UHD. So this is the final result and this is the 3D model right here. So to get this 3D model that we've created, and you can get the MP4, which is this video, and you can get the original picture that you uploaded. But, oh, and actually this right here, it actually creates the normal maps and everything, all the 3D map. And actually it, it shoots out a normal map also. So right here, you're gonna click a right click and download. This is now downloading the 3D model. It's an OBJ 3D model, which is a standard 3D model object. Then I'm also going to download this PNG right here. And you could download the uh, MP4 file if you'd like. But see right there, the, this now created the normal map. It created the depth map from the picture. And it did the inference in the machine learning to fill in what it thought was the back side of Maryland here, even without a photo. So that's just simply amazing. Instantly turn, it's been about 10 minutes or less, we can turn a picture in a 3D mod, into a 3D model. So I've also actually checked out that you can take a photo. So some people have anime photos, or they've done their own, uh, you know, pose photos, photos with uh, modeling of people. And you can actually take those, or historic figures and sculptures are working also. So uh, if anyone needs any help in having me uh, do any of this, just let me know. I'm here, I can uh, take a photo, turn it into a 3D object, bring it into Blender, clean it up, texture it, and then uh, render it out as a new, say an FBX file, and then I can bring it into Mixmail and be turn into an animated 3D object, which you can then bring into Blender or which you can then bring into Unity or Unreal Engine. And then you would, and then through Blueprints or through Unity, you would script it so that you could control the animated 3D object as a character, as a game character. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, since I have the, uh, 3D object here, and I have the uh, 3D map here. I'm going to go into Blender now. So we're going to open up Blender here. This is the latest version of Blender just came out. You can go over this object and delete it. So now all you do is go File, Import, OBJ. There it is. And there she is. There's Marilyn. Amazing. Right there. There she is. Marilyn Monroe. It's amazing. So now we're in object mode. UV editing's here. We want to move to edit mode here. That's where we can delete these vertices that we don't need. Those. All right, so you're going to have to spend a little time if you want to work on the model, sculpt the model, fix all that. But you see, even in 
But you see, even when you are spending $100,000 and going to a volumetric video studio, you're not really getting that much better than this. And then they still have to take it like this and clean up the fade and clean it all up. So, uh, you know, this is just amazing on what you can do. And, you know, video is only a series of images. Although they only show you in the demo, you will be... You can't really bring a video in and then I'll put a series, an animation series. Okay, so what I'm going to do really quick is I'm going to come over here to UV editing and we're just going to add a quick texture to this. We're going to come here. We're going to bring up the model. So what you do is you've got the model here. So you click the model, you're in object mode, and then you click in your add mode. Select all, select the model. So now you click on UV and you select project and you click on project from and click project from view. What that does is that brings you up in this. So you've got the UV mapping here. We have the photo here, the original image. See that? Now what we need to do is adjust the image so that it fits perfectly with Marilyn. You get the base color, image texture, then you then you choose it. There it is, Marilyn Monroe one. And then you come over to layout. And you click this. And there she is, Marilyn Monroe. But you see, you got her on both sides. One here. What it does, it duplicates the texture on this side. So in order to clean that up, I have to go back to UV editing. Then you go to the back here. See, the thing is, you're going to have to sculpt the model better. You're going to have to clean it up. And really, the best is going to be just a perfect picture with a T-pose. But, I mean, it's a real nice start to get the majority of the model done. You could just take a person, have them do a T-pose skeleton. A T-pose, and then turn that into a skeleton and animated figure. So, to clean up this in the back... So see, here's the back of her head, but it's showing the same image on both sides. How we've got to clean this up is we're going to go over her face here. We're going to highlight that. I mean, this is the UV and the texture right here. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and I'm going to highlight that. So there's the back of her head, the texture, but it's showing the front of her head. So then what I'm going to do is, it's pretty funny, I'm going to go here and see, look, and I'm going to make this patch so that it goes to where her hair is. You see, we could go dark or light, maybe we'll go a little darker here. See that? And then what that's doing is that's uh, copying the texture to the UV to here. So you see, now we don't really have our face on the back of our hair. However, 3D modeling, you know, and all these UVs can be manipulated. All the textures on the UVs can be changed, copied, pasted. So, you know, that's the whole art within itself. This can all be cleaned up here. 
this these can all be cleaned up here but you see that's the uh, that's really what it's all about is I'm just doing the quick overview here so we have the photo So that's what we're talking about right there. So we have a photo that's been UV mapped on a Marilyn Monroe. And although it's not perfect, it's okay. Now, there are many ways to make digital twins, digital humans. You know, probably the easiest way is to, they show you how to make a head. You put a head in Blender, then you put your face over that, and then you map all the UVs to your face so that you know your ears and everything's just perfect but that takes a long time uh, there are other you know ways to do this with just the head in artificial intelligence so uh, but you know this can be done in high resolution very high resolution this is not being done in very high resolution but you'd have to send it to a different cloud because uh, Google can't do it in super high resolution or you would have to do it on your own machine, but you'd have to have a very high uh, VPU, powerful VPU. So there we go. We've got the quick textured model here. I'm not going to put any more time into that, but that's just to show you the start. And you know, I've you have, and you know, every time you do this, and you know, you're going to have different results uh, depending depending on the photo. So now the last thing we want to do is we want to export this 3D model with the texture on it. So in order to do that, what you have to do is you have to make sure right there that you click pack all into blend because what that's going to do is that's going to pack the texture onto the 3D model. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do an export we're going to export it as an FBX, but then right here, you have to do path mode, copy, and then right there, click that, embed textures, you see that? See, it's tricky. If you just uh, export this as a model, it's not going to, it's, it's not going to embed the textures. So that's why you want to do this. So you click that, then we name the file here. click export FBX and that's it now it's not perfect here and I could spend a lot more time clean up the model so it's absolutely perfect but that's fine enough for me and now here is M model here's the Marilyn Monroe model with a tech model with a texture on it but you know here we do have the output which has the normal file which has the normal map and all that has the texture normal map here so you could use these so you could use these also so now you have to go to Adobe Mixamo now Adobe Mixamo they bought Mixamo Adobe bought Mixamo back in around 2014 and so many people use this but they don't particularly update this and uh, you may have go through this whole process and not remember to add the texture to the file the fbx that you output and then when you bring it in it's not going to have any texture but so here's a file that i did of myself and i mean it's not that bad the face right there that's not that bad and then i have to clean up the hair and uh, fix the hands but see with blender you can go by you know the uvs so you could replace the entire body you could replace the hands you could replace the shoes the feet and you would just replace them and uh, connect them to the 3d model so there's that so what we do is we go right here so now what we're going to do is we're going to upload a character and here's our fbx and here's our obj so let's come and bring in the fbx here which has the texture on it. Now the thing is, if you're not in the T pose with the arms out or the A pose where it's pretty much a just a straight body pose with your arms down and a little out, 
You may not be able to rig the skeleton here because it'll just throw an error. So uh, really you want to get an amazing picture of someone in a great high resolution. And you want to have them be in like a T-pose. So here we go. There it's brought it in. So now what we do here, here it's brought in Marilyn, it's brought her in with the texture. So now here we've got this auto rigger and we, we don't we don't want to use symmetry here because what if you use symmetry, let's go with the knees, it's gonna bring them close together, but if you don't use symmetry, then we can go and position the knee. So we want to position the two knees. Position our elbows here, chin, wrists, and lasses groin. All right, so that's it. So this is actually going to auto rig a skeleton to Marilyn, and then I'm going to be able to go and. Uh, pose Marilyn in all these different poses, make Marilyn dance and everything, but the problem is that it may not recognize this pose uh, because it really wants a T pose like this, so if you bring in a picture of yourself this is the best way to do it, a very high resolution with a contrast, nice picture of yourself with your arms out, so we can add in and rig the skeleton points. So what we're going to do is it's going to rig and see if we can do it, it might throw an error. Okay, so you see you couldn't do it because uh, it really needs the T-pose in order to make the skeleton. But I have myself here, Cliff. And I brought myself in with a T-pose. It's not perfect, but I mean, look at that. That was just straight from the scan. So that's high resolution enough. And I think that looks pretty good. I'd replace the hands. Now, you know, there's many ways of making digital twins and digital humans. So ultimately, you could just take a head and a body and you could just map the face. And then you wouldn't even need to deal with the body and you could just change all that and then bring in the T-pose and then that'd be the simple way. But I just want to show everybody the more complex way of, which is the newest that just came out on June 25th basically, open source, where uh, I can do this, turn a person into a 3D model and then see, and then we can do that. And there it is as long as you got the T pose so when you take a picture of yourself make sure to do the T pose then you can do a hundred different animations per page and then we can search for dance animation then we can search for dance animation and then we have hundreds of animations So I'll do some salsa here. <laughs> so then here just show you the skeleton behind the model. It's a skeleton. Now here we've got all different uh, settings here. So we can adjust the range, the spacings of the arms trim it up so it's much tighter exactly how you want your animated character so now this is the salsa dancing pose on cliff and so what you do is you have this pose and then you just click download and then that's going to embed the animation into the fbx file but then you'd go into unity or unreal engine and you would bring that into the scene but then you would have to make sure that you're animating it and then what ultimately you would do is you would map the uh, game you would turn into a game pawn and you'd map the controllers 
so that this animation will come in as a T pose and the skeleton, but then you can make it run, walk, and move with the joystick and do different things like all these different animations. And then you can actually, in uh, Unreal Engine, it's really incredible when you make a sequence, a movie, you can actually make these movie sequences and then you would, in a sequence, or you would blend the animations. So it's very nice how you blend from going from salsa dancing to break dancing. So like that, there wouldn't be that delay there. And uh, it would just move from running to walking to jumping to dancing. So that's everything. That's the whole process. I mean, it's a little intricate and it takes some time. And then like anything, every one of these is its own science. So you have 3D modeling, 3D texturing, 3D mapping, UV mapping, texturing materials. You have machine learning, outputting the 3D model, texturing the model, rigging and this bringing the skeleton onto the model and then uh, finally bring it into Mixamo here and doing the animation. So I hope that helped out and um, this just goes to show that I go through the whole end-to-end -end process to show you that I have the end-to-end -end process down here and to explain it to you so that you could do it yourself. So thanks for watching, guys. Make sure to like, subscribe, share, send friends, and make sure to connect to me on LinkedIn, LinkedIn Cliff Baldridge. And I'll accept I'm almost at my max limit of 30,000 connections all around the world that are uh, hand-vetted hand and all uh, great resources and connections and a lot of friends out there. So thanks for watching.